Greetings. It's once again time for Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb, where Herbert Herbert Herb is asked questions. I'm something of a Herbert Herbert Herb myself, so I feel I might be the person to answer these questions. So I won't waffle any more than I have to, and just get to the answering. First up, Ratto said, Have you sold any piss products through your Teespring store or otherwise? I don't believe I have. I did just have a brief look and it seems to be a no, but I could be missing something in the analytics. That's okay though, it's not like I spent a whole lot of time designing that, and any sale would be a bonus. And I can understand why somebody might not want a shirt with piss written on it in large letters. Also, I know stuff from Teespring is a little bit on the expensive side. It could also just be the fact that I don't really promote merch at all. It's actually not something I've really thought about lately, and merch isn't a priority for me, but maybe I should try to find a better option than Teespring, and maybe come up with something better than piss. I guess it's yet another thing for future Herbert to worry about. Poor bastard. Trekan Belovich said, Are you a member of the Australian Legion of Good at Naming Things Order? No, and I really should be. You know that I should be. They keep telling me no and suggesting that I might be bad at naming things. Can you believe that? I've no idea what their problem is. I suspect they might be on drugs. Spanish Boy said, Favourite type of steam train? I'm pretty bad at picking favourites, and I do like a lot of steam trains. One of them certainly is the Queensland Rail PB15. I guess it's kind of the engine I grew up with. By which I mean the local railway museums when I was growing up all seemed to have a PB15 for their trains. There's something about it that just has that little bit of charm, I guess. I also really like British steam, stuff like pannier tanks in particular. I think those are really cool. That's why the first engine I bought in N-Scale, well, since I was a kid, is a pannier tank. Also, gigantic engines like the Big Boy are also pretty interesting. It's a difficult thing to pick one favourite, so I won't. Hercheon said, You were offered a Sentinel delivered for one Australian dollar on the condition that you restore it. Would you go for it? On the surface, it seems like a deal you just can't pass up. My question would be, do I have to do the restoration myself? I haven't got the skills or tools or the space to even start doing that, and it would probably cost a bunch of money just finding a place to store it. It would probably be slightly frowned upon if I was to leave it in front of my place. I could probably organise volunteers with the relevant skills, but really I think it would end up costing a lot more than a dollar. All that said, I'd probably still take it, because it's a sentinel and it's got a giant dick on the front, and mostly because why not? Trekan Belovich said, Are you planning to get some tank transport trailer for your model railway? I assume you mean like a rail wagon for tanks and not like a road transporter? I did see a kind of heavy duty flat car a while ago, and I can't remember if it was a British or US vehicle, but it did have, I believe, a Sheridan on it. Probably a little bit outside of the era that I want to model, but it was still cool, and I'd probably still buy it. Though I may not get that particular model, but I would like to have tanks on my railway in some form or another. I've thought about modelling an army base or maybe like a railway embarkation point or something, but I'm not 100% sure I'll do that or not. There is a good chance there will be tanks, either on the ground or on flatbeds or something. SDKFZ234-4 said, What is your favourite German SPG based on the Panzer 3-4 chassis? My personal favourite is the Sturmhaubitzer 42. That seems oddly specific. I don't have one. It's not really something I've given any consideration to. I do like Stugs and Stu's Sturmhaubitzers. They're interesting, but I don't spend a lot of time picking favourites of anything really. Especially when it would just be an arbitrary choice anyway. Trekan Belovich said, Do you have the Bofors 37mm AT gun by first to fight? Because it's issue number 69. Hway 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 hway. Sadly I don't, and I did just look at the store that I get those kits from and they're sold out. I'll have to keep an eye out for it though because I need to make that hilarious joke in the video. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, Have you backed any crowdfunding projects before? I have. There were some miniature bases I backed a few years ago, and I think I used some of them for some Malifaux or something like that. I'm pretty sure I got a set of pipe kind of bases, and some broken wooden floor bases. I also backed one of the light sail satellite things that Bill Nye was doing. I've also backed at least one video game, though I can't remember what the name of it is, and I've got no idea what happened with it, but it was meant to be a survival game like DayZ or something, and it was around the time DayZ was really big. 
Maybe I should actually check up on that and see if it actually went anywhere. I did pay the money, I should get to play the game. I'm pretty sure there's a couple of other things that I've backed and can't remember, but I've not backed anything for quite a few years now. Musei said, Is the postal system down under just as slow and antiquated as the one in the US? The postal service here is definitely not without issue, but I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as the US. I obviously don't live there, so I don't really experience that postal system, but if I mailed something and it doesn't arrive, it's almost always been to the US. Anecdotal evidence at best, I guess, but you know. The mail here is fairly quick and reliable. I've even received packages on Sundays, though they may have come through a private company and not Australia Post. I don't remember, so I might be giving them undue credit for that. I don't want to do that. As I understand it, the post in the US is bad because it's being underfunded and deliberately run poorly because certain people would like to replace it with private business, obviously to benefit themselves. The trick being to use lobbying and things like that to make it so bad that the average person will believe it's better run by a corporation as a for-profit business instead of a service. I'm pretty sure people here in Australia want the same thing, they're just not as successful. Yet. Stuff like the postal service is, well, it's a service. It's for the benefit of the people. That's why governments run them and should run them. Services like the Postal Service shouldn't be yet another business designed to squeeze as much profit out of people as possible. For a corporation, it stops being profitable to deliver letters to bumfuck nowhere, and that's a problem. You should be able to have reasonable mail service no matter where you live, and not be penalised because shareholders demand constant growth. Services like the Postal Service are what taxes are for, or what taxes should be for. In the YouTube comment section of last month's Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb, Spanish Boy said, What's the hottest that's ever gotten in Australia? It's not something I would know off the top of my head, but I was curious, so I googled it. According to the internet, in January this year, it was 50.7 degrees in Onslow, Western Australia. That's 123.3 degrees Fahrenheit for our US friends and their weird measurements. And it seems the same temperature was also recorded in Udna Data in 1960. Udna Data. It's just a fun name to say, isn't it? Let's go to Udna Data! Let's not. That does seem pretty hot, but it's probably not the highest temperature in the world. Still, it's far too hot for me. Okay, that's enough questions for now, mostly because there aren't any left. They've all been answered. So, let's have a look at some of the models that have been shared in the Discord community over the last month. So Muir has shared this rather nice looking French R35 light tank. I'm going to assume this is the same tank that came in the box behind it, so it's a Tamiya 35th scale kit. It seems like this one has been named Le Buffle, which I think means the Buffalo. I really like the French camo patterns like this. They're interesting and colourful, and I rather like the way the colours have a dark line separating them all. Keep up the good work. Trekan Belovich shared this British Bofors 40mm SP. I assume the SP stands for self-propelled and not stinky poop or something. This is a metal and resin model in 15mm scale from Battlefront, and clearly Trekan has painted it very nicely with the insignia of the Guards Armoured Division. I'm always impressed and a little bit jealous of just how much stuff Trekan gets painted, and usually there's more than one completed model a month from him. So here's another. This is a Panzer 3F, which Trekan says is an F3 turret with an F1 hull and a short 50mm gun. I don't know much about Panzer designations, so I'll take his word for it. The model is a 28mm scale Rubicon kit, which has been painted as a tank belonging to the 15th Panzer Division in the North African theatre. I had to share it because it's really well done. Jan Tima has shared this flying machine. It is more specifically a BF109G6 in 48th scale, and it's an Edward Weekend Edition kit. I think it looks really good. I'm clearly not a plane expert, so I'm not going to be doing any critique or anything, but it looks really well detailed in both the model itself and the paint job. The weathering makes it look as though it's been out fighting hard and has, so far, been successful. Yan did ask for thoughts when this was posted, so if you've got any thoughts on this yourself, I'm sure they would be appreciated on Discord or in the comments section here. Monol finished this Merc Lance, and I don't know much about Battletech, but I'm pretty sure the Lance is the unit size, and not a type of weapon. Or maybe it's both. 
What I do know, however, is that I do appreciate a good giant mechanical stompy boy, and these certainly qualify. Very nicely done. Australia Ian has finished this P38 Lightning. I really like Lightnings. I think they're cool. This is the 48th scale kit from Tamiya, and I understand a fair bit of time went into this. It's really well done. The chipping along the panels around the engines is really nice, and I feel like that's a pretty convincing look. Also, that blue on the propeller cap things is just a really nice colour, and it stands out quite a lot. In a good way, obviously. Awesome job. I can't wait to see the next thing you do. Peter Renko shared this T72 Moderna. I'm not quite sure if I've been saying that properly, but that's how I read it. This 15mm scale model is a kit bash, using the T72B from Zvezda as a base, with parts from other models and plastic boards. And as Peter Enko mentioned, it's kind of hard to be perfectly accurate in a scale so small, but I think this is really good. I always like seeing kit bashes, and it's just really cool to have a vehicle that very few other people might have. And it just goes to prove that there's very little stopping you from getting a particular vehicle you want if you're willing to put in the effort. Excellent work. And that's all the models for this month. Not really, there is quite a few more posted on Discord that you should go and check out. It would just take forever and a day to share everything here. So, as always, a big thank you to everybody who shares their models and asks questions. These videos would be really short without you. Though it would be a bit quicker for me to make them, so... Hmm. No, actually, I do prefer there being questions and models and stuff. Anyway, an extra big thank you to my patrons. I appreciate your support greatly. As always, Ask a Herpet Herpet Up will be back next month, so get your questions in in a calm, orderly fashion. Take care of yourselves, and if you can, take care of somebody else. Have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.